guys, welcome back to my channel. So, as you, uh, I'm sure are clearly aware from the title of this video, I have decided to start a rolling project pan for 2020. Now, uh, if you're new, if you're one of the lovely people who has recently subscribed, discovered my channel through my declutter series, hello, my name is Lauren and I'm, I'm a terrible project panner. I think it was back in 2018 that I decided to do a year long project pan where I picked out 18 products to try to finish in the year and uh, it, it didn't go so well for me. And this is the thing, it's not that I didn't like put in a valiant effort, it's not that my intention wasn't there. I am just very distractible, I would say, like with my makeup using habits. I have a very hard time sticking to one product for a long period of time. I like to flit around and try different things. I have a pretty large makeup collection and I do like to feel like I'm giving equal love to my products. So it just is very, very hard for me to finish anything, especially like anything that's a pressed powder. However, after having just gone through my entire makeup collection and decluttering a bunch of stuff, I found myself feeling really inspired to try again. And this time I'm gonna do things differently. I'm gonna try to set myself up for a little bit more success. But I know that there are products in my collection that I'm very close to finishing and I really just wanna give myself that like little extra boost of motivation to actually like get through them. So I have picked out a little modest collection of products that I know are on their last leg that I would feel really accomplished to finish up and I am going to set that intention through this video series to use these products and then once I finish one of them, the plan will hopefully be to identify another product in my collection to replace that product with and then to start working on finishing that. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, just to clearly set the expectations, these are not like the most exciting products to pan. I'm not picking any eyeshadow palettes or lipsticks because I have learned that those are things that are just really, really hard to pan. And as a person that's not very good at project panning, that's not very experienced, I feel like it's, it's better to start out with some easy things and like build up my confidence than pick some things that are gonna be really, really challenging and then just continue to feel discouraged. So I'm gonna show you guys what I've picked out for this project, kind of show you where I'm at as far as like how much product is left in each of these. And then I'm hoping to do an update like seasonally. So like three months from now, I'll check in, I'll let you guys know how things are going, if I've finished anything, and then if I have, I'll let you know what products I've picked to replace those products. So with that being said, let's, let's get into what exactly I picked out for this project. The first thing is probably very predictable. If you've been watching my videos lately, I've been talking about this product a lot. And that is the Coats Face Tinted Sunscreen Primer. This is something I've had in my collection for a while and I actually have already repurchased a new tube, but I'm not going to open it up obviously until I finish this one. So this is something I definitely want to burn through. I feel like this is something I could easily finish up within the next month. And hopefully by putting it in this project, it will light a little fire under my butt and then I'll actually like, you know, make that happen. So basically this is a mineral sunscreen. It's got SPF 40, but it's very thick and whipped, kind of like the Benefit Professional in texture. So it really fills in pores and kind of blurs things out nicely, which makes it a great base under makeup. And it doesn't have any fragrances or anything really irritating in it. So I find it to work really, really nice on my skin. It also has a little bit of a tint to it. So I feel like on days where I want to wear like basically no makeup, I can put this on and it will just kind of make my skin look a little bit more perfected. The only thing I would caution is if you are like ultra, ultra pale, the tint in here might look a little weird on your skin tone. But I think pretty much anybody that is like darker than ultra porcelain probably could use this without a problem. So it's kind of hard to say exactly how much I have left in here obviously you guys can see that this tube is is pretty flat at this point there's like a little a little bit of product 
left in here. So this to me is like a really, really easy pan. There are some other primers in my collection that are gonna be a little bit more challenging that I also wanna try to finish this year. But I figured again, we'll start easy and we'll, we'll try to finish this one up first. Then next I picked out a couple of foundation complexion type products that are old and that also are pretty much used up and that I just need to kind of like finally finish. The first is this Pure Lease Perfect Glow BB Cream with SPF 30. This is really nice for everyday wear because it has some sunscreen in it. It provides nice coverage. It's got a very glowy finish to it. So this is not like the best thing for my skin type, which is very oily. But since it's winter and my skin is a little bit more dehydrated, I have been able to use this more like to get ready for work and whatnot, and I've been enjoying it. So again, this is one of those things where it's kind of hard to say exactly how much I have left in here because it's an opaque squeeze tube. It feels pretty light, although sometimes I've found, like at least with my previous project panning experience, things can be deceiving, and when you think they're mostly empty, they can end up lasting several more months. So this is one that I think it might take me the full three months to finish this up based on how much is left in here. But if I use it regularly, this might be like my primary base product to wear to work for the next couple of weeks. I'll see if I can really make some progress with it. Then next I have the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Foundation. This is like my holy grail foundation. As a person with oily skin, I think this looks absolutely beautiful. It's very, very thin and lightweight in texture, but it has really great coverage. It has, I would say, more of a satin matte finish. It's not really super flat and matte if you let it dry down without setting it. It just looks very natural and really pretty on the skin, and it's super long wearing, and it doesn't get like crazy shiny on me after a few hours. So clearly, being a foundation I really, really like, I've used up a lot of this bottle. The only reason I think it's taken me so long to go through this is that this shade is too light for me so every time I use this particular color which is macadamia I have to mix it with something else so it just takes that much longer for me to finish this so I actually do have a second bottle of this foundation in a darker shade that's newer that I have more of which is why that one's not in the project and this one is I just know that this is getting old and so far the texture of it hasn't gone off yet but I definitely feel like it's something I should be trying to use up as quickly as possible because it really probably doesn't have too much like shelf life left to it. I also picked out a concealer to add to this project. This is something I mentioned when I was doing my complexion declutter that's old and that I was like debating whether or not I even wanted to keep it, but I decided to keep it with the promise to myself that I would focus on using this and trying to finish it up. So this is the Wander Beauty Duelist Concealer. So this basically is a two-in-one product that has a stick concealer on one side and then a liquid concealer on the other. I'm not a huge fan of the liquid concealer portion of this, but the stick concealer in this is incredible. It's super creamy. It has really, really great coverage to it. It blends so nicely on the skin and it doesn't really look like cakey or too dry. It's just super, super nice. But I feel like I just kind of forgot about this and didn't reach for it a ton last year. I was using a lot of other concealers, trying a lot of new things. So this kind of just collected dust for a while and now it's old. So we're gonna try to use up especially the stick concealer portion of this. I'm a little less concerned about the liquid because again, I just don't really like it. I would be happy if I could at the very least just use up the entire stick side. And then also from Wander Beauty, I'm putting in their powder foundation. Again, this is something I've had in my collection for a while. It has the most gorgeous, ultra creamy, very silky texture to it. It has beautiful coverage and I usually use a little puff that comes inside of this to apply it. So I feel like this product has a pretty nice dip to it, but I still have not hit pan on this. So I would definitely like to see pan by my three month check-in. I don't anticipate that I will necessarily have used the entire thing up. I would definitely like to do that by the end of the year, but at least for the next check-in, my goal is to try to hit pan on this, which I think is probably doable, especially if I start using this regularly. So like, honestly, I think between this product and the Pure Lease BB Cream, like those are the two foundations I want to wear to work on a daily basis in rotation so I can hopefully get through them. Then I picked a setting powder. This is something that has a very short shelf life and it already is very different from when I got it maybe like 
eight months ago or so. So this is something I feel like I just want to try to finish up as quickly as possible and then move on to the other powders in my collection. So this is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. It's that powder that, you know, was really, really popular here on YouTube maybe a year and a half, two years ago because it's infused with water and when you apply it to your skin, it feels wet. It's very trippy. However, mine is completely dried out. It has none of that feeling to it whatsoever anymore at this point it's just a loose setting powder. Granted it's a very nice loose setting powder. I like this product a lot. I like the way that it makes my makeup look because it is very finely milled. It's very soft. It gives my skin a very blurred airbrushed finish and during these cooler months when I don't need quite as much like mattification if you will. I feel like this is a little less drying than some of my other powders so I actually prefer to use it if I'm going to be wearing a matte foundation so that way I don't end up looking too matte. So honestly there's not like a ton ton of product left in here. I feel pretty confident about my ability to finish this up. Now in my personal experience, loose powders can be a little deceiving because I'm not someone that goes crazy with the powder. I don't typically bake my face. So I actually don't end up using as much as some other people on like a regular basis. But I, I still do feel like this is something that like, I think, I think I could probably go through in three months. Now when it comes to cheek products, I decided to go pretty easy on myself because I know those are some of the hardest things in my collection for me to hit pan on. If you saw my cheek product collection declutter video, I have a lot of blushes and I have a lot of highlights. They're some of my favorite products in my collection and I really, really like rotating through them. I like using my face palettes. So I feel like I never use any one of them for a long enough period of time to ever hit pan. I'm just like kind of constantly merry-go-rounding and, and choosing different things. However, I was using this product the other day and I noticed I have a pretty sizable dip in it. And so it makes me feel like I could realistically hit pan on this guy. And I actually don't have a ton of bronzers. So I feel like it would be kind of cool to actually like hit pan on one of them. So the one I picked out for this project is my Makeup Forever Artist face color in the shade S112. So this is a contouring powder. It's a really, really nice, very smooth, natural looking powder. It's the contour that I'm wearing on my face today. So I have a little bit on my cheekbone and around the perimeter of my face, around my hairline, and I feel like it's just a really nice color. It's a really smooth, easy to blend product. So it's something I really enjoy using. And this is a much smaller compact than a lot of my other bronzers. So I feel like this gives me hope that I might actually be able to like hit pan. Now this is something that's been in my collection at this point for probably about two years. So I know it's starting to get a little bit old, which is also part of the reason why I like to actually try to use it up or at least hit pan on it. So we'll see how it goes. Again, I can see that there's a little bit of a well in here. I've been using this a lot regularly. It's the bronzer that I've been like keeping on my vanity when I get ready in the morning. So hopefully within the next three months, even if I don't hit pan, I'll at least make some serious progress and like make a good solid dent in this. So I've just picked out one other makeup product for now to add to this project. Again, because I don't want to like overwhelm myself and this is gonna be a rolling project. So my intention is to add more things as I go. So the last thing I'm going to focus on at least for these next three months is the Folklore Artist Sketch Eyebrow Pencil. So this is an eyebrow pencil I've talked about a bunch recently. I really, really like it. It's what I used to do my brows today. It's very creamy. You don't have to press too hard to get it into your brows, but it's also not so pigmented that it goes on like an eyeliner and it looks really blocky. It's very natural, it's easy to blend, and I find it to be very long wearing. So I've still got a fair amount of this left in this cartridge, and I've been using this a lot. So this is about where we are at with how much product is left in here. However, I do also have a refill of this product, which is one of the cool things about it. It comes with a second cartridge. So when you finish this first one, you can pull it out and pop a fresh one in. So I don't know if I'm necessarily going to go through the refill in the next three months, but definitely I, I like to use that up as well this year 
which I think like that's that's super doable for a brow product. Now I also wanted to do something a little non-traditional for this project and include some skincare. I know most people when they do project pans only pan makeup, but I also really want to put a conscious effort towards using up my skincare collection this year. So I've also picked out some skincare products that I've been using diligently morning and night pretty much this entire month in the hopes that within the next month or two, I'll actually like finish these containers entirely up. So I am adding all of my Peter Thomas Roth Wrinkle Resist products to this project. So I have the amino acid exfoliating peel pads, I have the wrinkle resist serum, and the lift and firm moisturizer. These are very expensive products. Like this serum I think is $125, which is nuts. But I feel like they are some of the nicest skincare products that I've ever tried. Like I do feel that when I'm using these regularly, my skin does look really nice. It has a bit of a glow to it. It generally breaks out less and I do feel like I notice um, less in the way of fine lines. I don't have the worst fine lines and wrinkles. I'm 32. Having oily skin has kind of made things a little bit easier on my skin as far as signs of aging goes, but I do still notice benefits from using these products. However, I feel like because they are expensive, I have been, again, kind of like nursing them and not using them as much in the last year, but that's really dumb because skincare, again, it expires, it doesn't last forever. These do have an 18 month shelf life and I feel like we are nearing that point now based on how long I've had these in my collection. So that is why I really would actually like to use them up because it would be a total waste to have really excellent expensive skincare sitting in my cabinet and then have it just expire as opposed to actually getting the benefits of using them. So that is everything that's going into my 2020 rolling project pan to start. I know it's not like the most crazy, exciting, epic project pan ever, but honestly, sometimes baby steps are better than no steps. Hopefully this will encourage all of my fellow failed project panners to try again this year and you know, not necessarily feel so intimidated by the idea of project panning. There are so many people out there that are incredible at it and that can just pan so many things like people panning highlighters and blushes and lipsticks and full eyeshadow palettes. And I think it's absolutely amazing, but it can be overwhelming and discouraging for those of us who just struggle with it and have large makeup collections and don't go through products really easily. So we're gonna start modest, we're gonna start achievable, we're gonna start with a few things that I think I can use up and that I will feel really good about finishing up and then we'll take it from there. Like I said, I will check in with you guys probably in about three months or so and we'll see how I'm doing. And maybe in the springtime, we'll add in a few things that are a little bit more of a challenge to kind of, you know, finish out the rest of the year. To that point, if you've also decided to embark on a Project Pan journey this year, tell me all about it in the comments down below. Is this your first time ever doing a Project Pan? Are you a seasoned vet? Do you have any tips to share on Project Panning? I'm sure plenty of us would love to hear them, so leave all the details for us in the comments down below. And yeah, I think that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I hope you'll consider giving it a thumbs up. I always appreciate your support so much. And if you recently subscribed, thank you so, so much for clicking that button. I hope you will continue to stick around and uh, hang out with me again in the future. And yeah, on that note, I'm going to let you guys go. But I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.